Yeah, already. Ready, ready, already, already, already. Ups and Down Smiling Show, where we talk about real life, but we don't take life too seriously, and we hear the stories of everyday people. My name is Shireen, and we have Lisa here, and today we're going to talk about child sexual abuse. Cue the intro. <laughs> virtual upside down smiley show i've been doing a bunch of episodes with my husband and kind of tired of relationship content why is this a topic that you've been really open about and you're really passionate about sharing i think a few reasons sadly or i, I hate that word because it doesn't even encompass it but i i know too many adults yeah in my circle in my family close yeah. friends um, acquaintances. I, I know too many adults who experience sexual abuse as kids. Yeah. And so, you know, I only started finding out stories from friends probably late college, after college, so into adulthood already, right? And you're kind of shocked, but I kind of didn't know what to do with that information at first, but I, I knew it was big. And then, you know, some being someone of faith, you know, believing in God, there was always kind of this Something was there, but I didn't know how to put all that together. And yeah. I think that what ended up happening for me is I had Devin. You yeah. know, I became a mom and all of a sudden reality hit, you know, that, yeah, all these people that I know were adults, but what happened to them happened to them as children. Mm -hmm. So when I look at Devin now, I see what they, you know, and it, I just, it, it, it became too much where I was like, okay, now what do we do? You know, I think God put Devin in my life, not just to be a mom, but to also finally bring this out for me. I did a video with my mom. I asked her what would be like the one piece of advice that you would give parents. And it was, watch your children. You, you are here to protect them. Right. And I, I've never heard her talk about that, but that's clearly what they were doing because right. I had that experience. And so yeah. I've had people, just because of like the nature of me sharing these different topics, I've, I've had people reach out to me that has experience, have had that experience as children. And I almost felt unworthy to share that kind of story because I almost felt guilty that I've had such a blessed life of right. not experiencing those things because right. it almost seems like so normal. Right. So common. So for me, I truly believe um, the most like effective way or the most impactful way to create change is through dialogue. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm big on talking and, and discussing, not talking, discussing. Like me yeah. standing at the front of blah, 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 doesn't do yeah. anything, mm -hmm. right? You need the back and forth. I learn the most through discussion, right? And like, that's the thing about this, like parenting stuff. We're so good about like, oh, what's the new like behavioral technique you're doing? Mm -hmm. What's the new math thing you're doing? Oh, when your kid does this, what do you do? But nobody talks about the fact that, and we're really good to like stranger danger, you know? And the thing with child sexual abuse, over 90% of predators, predators meaning the person who's committing the abuse, over 90% is someone that you know, someone yeah. that you trust, someone that you're close to. 30% statistics say is like a family member, a family member, and then the other 60 is someone you're acquainted with, you trust, you know, and then the other 10 are, are strangers. And we do all this work about stranger danger and if someone off it, but what do we do about people that you know and love? And, and the reason we run from this topic is because that's exactly why. The people yeah. doing this horrific act are people that we love, that we trust. So how can you ever let your mind go there? You know, but one in 10 kids in the U.S., you know, statistics are different. I live in Germany now. In the U.S. right now, currently, the statistics are one in 10 kids are sexually abused before they hit 18. Many over multiple years. You yeah. know, I've had friends who've had it happen once or twice, and I've had friends who've, who've gone through it years. In the South Asian community, too, the thing is, like, one of our greatest strengths, the community. We have this huge community that's, like, super close, and everyone knows each other, and we're all close and love each other and care about each other. But yeah. when it comes to this topic, for a lack of better words, it's also kind of our greatest weakness, right? Because everybody is family. Everybody is yeah. close. We trust everyone. We see each other all the time. Respect for elders, right? You call anybody auntie and uncle. Especially when it comes to respect and what, how our community views that, it's another thing. It's probably one of the most detrimental 
things we do to our kids is this forced respect Mm -hmm. and how we show that respect and how we force our kids to show that respect is is like breeding grounds we're doing and this isn't to scare parents like that's never my intention you know like but you know we we do a lot of the work for these predators because they're people that we know and we trust so they have an easy they have easy access to our children and we trust these people because why wouldn't we right and I guess that's my message is you know there's a lot more to this and you just have to be careful of who you entrust your kids to and you have to have a lot of open and honest discussion and it's hard and it's awkward and it's weird and I have little kids so I can't even imagine as they get older how much more awkward it's gonna get you know but it's important and I've seen like when I tell you some stories about how Devin reacts to certain things it's like it's amazing to see how much they pick up on and when you allow them to be who they need to be and who they want to be and you allow them to have a voice and what their boundaries are it, it's incredible I didn't have that it's like so ahead of me already even now at where I'm at I remember having to give like every auntie and uncle like hugs and kisses and I've been hearing like more right. about parents are saying you don't need to do that one of the major points I wanted to bring up is like forcing our kids to like hug and kiss and sit on laps and That's you know whatever all these yeah like it you know the thing is if your kid is okay with that like if your child is an affectionate person who likes to hug and kiss and they themselves are comfortable with that then great you know it's it's the kids who are not like if your kid doesn't want to give someone a hug and I'm not talking about just someone I'm talking about even mom who am I to force Devin to give me a hug or a kiss because I want it yeah that you know that's serving like my need and my purpose and my want for love and affection but if he doesn't want to what am I teaching him that my needs mommy's needs this older person's needs and wants are way more important than yours you need to shove your needs and wants aside and give me what I need it sounds silly right but in a little child's mind you know sitting on a lap when I don't want to because mommy says I have to show respect and uncle said do that how is that any different than being touched somewhere where I don't feel comfortable? How does a child distinguish that? They don't. When did you start these conversations? He came out of my vagina and then we brought him home and then like I started. Like there, it is never too early and it's never too late to start these kind of conversations. So with kids that are super young, the, the number one thing you can do is teach them the proper names for their body parts. You know, okay. like vagina vulva penis nipple they're not dirty words you know we kind of like tend to cringe or kind of you know and the thing is like again as you know someone who's very faithful like you know when I talk to Devin about this specifically like God created me God created you God created these people every part has a purpose yeah every part has a function every part of you is beautiful you know there's nothing wrong or shameful about any part of your body but some of those parts are private and they're not meant for sharing with everyone you know so your penis your vagina your nipples your butt those are all private parts of your body that outside of the caretaker so in our case mommy and daddy once in a while grandma when she's here and that's also if he's okay with that. We have a lot of discussions about who's okay in giving you a bath and cleaning up after using the toilet. If we go to the doctor and mommy and daddy are there, sometimes they need to check your private parts to make sure you're healthy. When it comes to being healthy and safe and it's someone that's in your safety network, people that we've talked about are okay to do that, mm-hmm. then you know, outside of that, no one's allowed to touch you there, look at you there. You're not allowed to touch anyone else there, look at them there. Pictures, all anything related to your private parts, and sharing that it, that's not what it was meant for not now you know obviously that conversation changes as they get much older <laughs> Kevin is uh, I have four he understands a lot about that kind of stuff well, we'll have these conversations yeah but they're not allowed to do that and we had a conversation about like so when it's bath time is it okay if so and so you know and I just brought up the questions and he was very specific on who's allowed to give him a bath who's not allowed to come in and it was all from him when I allowed him to have a say his true self and what he's comfortable with what came out versus me at that age I'm like anybody and everybody like if you have grandparents and uncles and aunts and people that you you trust and you don't have a weird feeling about and your child trusts them as long as they know there are certain rules we have to set guidelines we have to set boundaries and those are I think the two most important things when it comes to child sexual abuse and you know, in this book that I read, and when I do these talks, it's about making our kids hard targets. No matter what we do, we can't necessarily prevent something from happening, as sad as that sounds. Just like when it comes to safety, crossing the street, stranger, you know, we can do everything we can. We don't know in the end if it's going to really 
happen. Protect them from everything, but we're giving them all the tools that they need, right? If they come face to face. Creating boundaries is uh, the most important thing you can do. Like children need to know that they are the boss of their bodies. Mm -hmm. I'm not the boss. Mommy's not the boss of you. Daddy's not the boss of your body. Body safety when it comes to that. You're the boss and you get to decide what you feel comfortable with. A lot of people brought up the fact with the old generation too, like they've been trying to stick up for their kid. Like they can see their kid doesn't want to hug and kiss his uncle, but that person expects it. The yeah. parents have to step in and kind of, hey, my kid's not comfortable. And you can see that the, the person takes offense to that. What do you mean? Like, it's just a little kid and I want, you know, yeah. and so trying to educate, I'm not only educating my kid, but having to educate grandparents, my husband, myself. Like there have been times where Devin's been like, no. Like, I don't want to kiss you. I don't, maybe later, you know, like he in the moment doesn't want to. And yeah, you take a step back for a second, but you realize, to be honest, like, I don't always want to hug and kiss Devin either. And I don't want to always hug and kiss De Dens, you know, or the baby. Like, I, I sometimes want my space and what's wrong with that? And I think it's making it personal. He can show his love and appreciation so many other ways. He doesn't just have to hug you or kiss you. He can say thank you for that gift or it was so good to see you. Sometimes he'll come, you know, by me and say, I want to play this game. So, you know, he wants to spend time with me. He's showing he, he loves me and wants to be with me. The word consent, right? Mm -hmm. Like we, we take that word to be something like, you know, with the whole Me Too movement yeah. and yeah. like adults and sex. And that's what consent is, you know, but consent is actually just allowing like giving permission to allow for something to happen. I'll ask Devin rather than just going right to him. I'll be like, can I give you a hug? Or to him, like, hey, can you give me a kiss? Like rather than just, oh, give me a kiss before, you know, like just kind of starting to ask that question so he understands that he has a say, that he's allowed to say yes or no. Once I've given consent to something, you can't take it back. Right. It's like ingrained in my head. And so many women that I've talked to, like, you know, this topic is about child sexual abuse. The Facebook group that we, you know, that we have online, it's called Proactive Parenting Against Sexual Abuse, not child sexual abuse. Because to me, the thing is, once my kid turns 18, yeah, they're not my child anymore. I'm preparing him to fight that into his adulthood as well. Boy yeah. or girl. So many women that I know, like, they've gotten into these weird situations where things went further than they wanted because at first they thought they wanted it. Yeah. You know, whether it was a boy they liked, a crush, a boyfriend, you know, they weren't sure. Maybe they were just experimenting. So they gave permission. They gave consent. And at some point they got uncomfortable. I already said yes. I already led him on. Yeah. Once you give it, it doesn't mean you can't take it back. And I think that's such a hard lesson. I still struggle with that. Like with little kid, when you're tickling them, you know, there's that point, even as adults, right, when you get tickled, it's yeah. funny at first. And then it's like, I don't want it anymore. <laughs> two minutes later, they're going to be like, do it again. So it's okay for you to give consent and give it back. And when they say yes, okay. When they say no, no. And then at some point, if you're over this game or don't want to play, you have every right to also say, no, I don't want to play this anymore. A adult sexual relationship as well, because you know, right. you, you could say yes, and then you say no, and then you're like, mm, maybe, and then you say no again. And then the other person has every right to, if they're like, okay, well, you don't seem to know what you want. It's never too late, but you know, I think you're advising people to start early. And then these are like skills oh, yeah. or th these are things that you get um, used to and comfortable with practicing. And then it just, right. it just becomes a part of your life. I was on a train and it was just some weird groping guy. I didn't even know the guy, but like with all these people around it, and it, I couldn't find, because I would never practice. I'd never been used to saying that. What would happen if I said those words out loud? Like, would I make everyone else around me uncomfortable in the train? Would like, you know, there were so many questions in my mind about that. And I was like, isn't that crazy? Right. Isn't that crazy? But that's how I've been, like, con conditioned. We have him, like, practice. Like, he legit, like, I'll have him stand up and, like, put his hand up and be like, stop or no or I don't like that. Like, practice saying those words out loud so you get comfortable. Yeah. So when you do feel uncomfortable, the words will still come out. Out, even if your body tends to shut down, I'm hoping that it becomes a reflex at some point. People that are gonna watch this and they're gonna be like laughing, or they're gonna be like, you're so excessive. But in my opinion, yeah. I would rather like, my future children, or even like myself, be this extra. That happened to me like just a few months ago when I was like out. And I was like hanging out with this guy and I shared it on my Instagram. I had ended up having to leave because it wouldn't stop, but I didn't, snap at him because I was like what's the point in snapping at him I'm 
just gonna look like a crazy right. bitch. Everyone else is gonna be uncomfortable. It's not even gonna go through his head because he was super drunk. I told him how I felt. You wouldn't want like your your mom to go through something like that. You wouldn't want like a cousin or a sister to go through something like that. I just want you to know what you did, even though you were drunk, because that's not an excuse. Yeah. And we need to be better about that. Like, yeah. and I shared it on my Instagram, and I I blocked out his name because like I don't think that's productive. Like I don't want people yeah. to at him this topic can seem kind of weird right to a lot of people but the the facts are the facts right the statistics yeah. are out there one in ten yeah. kids are sexually abused the two best websites to go to to learn about this are rain.org and mm -hmm. darkness to light.org 30 or 40 percent of those kids are under the age of 12. they're not kids that are in high school that are yeah. going through this they they are kids that are literally babies yeah. not even a year old to like eight, nine, 10 years old who don't know how to stand up for themselves, right? And, and don't trust themselves to go tell someone that this is happening or or they say something, but someone doesn't believe them. And that's the other thing, believing these kids are coming to you and saying, uncle so-and-so. Like, yeah. again, facts are facts. You, I know it's so hard to wrap your mind around the fact that a loved one, a trusted one. Sometimes as an adult, I think you feel like a failure too when you find out that like, because you, you clearly have somehow allowed this trusted person into your child's life. So you probably take it as, my fault. These are the numbers that are reported. How much of this is like not reported? And then in the Indian community, this is all completely taboo. No one talks about it. People know what's going on. You know, when we had that discussion in Chicago, it was so interesting. One of the girls at the talk, she brought up the fact that she remembers. They didn't understand it then, but looking back now as an adult, she remembers every time they went to a family party and a certain uncle came to that party, all the mothers would go and find their kids. These people are still in our homes. Like these kids have to see their abusers or even as adults, like, you know, everyone that I know of was still had to go to family parties and still had to be in touch with these people. And they were still given access even after telling people. It's like giving so much power to the abuser. People know what that person did to me. I am shamed because you didn't do anything wrong. And that's, I think, the power of this whole grooming process you know where you kind of get into the kids head and then they become part of the story and how it all happened and then they mm -hmm. allowed it to continue happening or they you know they didn't say no they didn't stand up they didn't fight they whatever it is and so you yeah a lot of adults feel extreme shame extreme guilt and you know child sexual abuse leads to like so much like social, emotional, psychological, physical problems. You know, you carry the weight of all of that for so many years with no help and like, you know, suicide and obesity and um, eating issues and depression and alcoholism. Like there's just so many things that are directly correlated to something that, like with any trauma that happens in your childhood, right? This is another one of those just traumas that you carry with for the rest of your life and it impacts you in a multitude of ways. We probably weren't taught like self-awareness or confidence and those are like really important things like to teach your kids. And I think, you know, I think it's just like our parents were worrying about other things or, you know, the priorities were different. But like those things aren't just natural. Like you, you aren't just naturally confident. And so I feel like if you're more confident, then you're more willing to speak up for yourself. They had brought up the fact that like, well, come on, like a teenager, like they just can't say no. Biologically, your brain is still developing, right? Mm -hmm. Like pathways are being formed until you're... Even people that are in their 20s and 30s or in beyond have a hard time saying right. no. You can't just expect like, that you've never taught your kid anything about consent, what it means. You've just been telling them, respect your elders, respect your elders, respect your elders, what they say goes. And then all of a sudden someone comes and does something to them, even if it's at the age of 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20, and you've never taught them the skills they needed, it's not gonna just like- Naturally happen. Even when they're in school, you're not with them. There's so much right. of life that they're not with you. So mm -hmm. that's why, I I feel like it's super important to have these conversations. Just trying to save your kids from carrying such a horrific trauma throughout their entire life, right? And like a this like 
perfect secret too. If they end up being put in this situation, it goes on for years or keeping that thing secret for so long. And for a little brain to like, you know, you carry that forever. There's another family who talked about how they don't ever use the word secrets in their family. There are no secrets. We have like happy surprises or it's surprises. Anything secret related always has to be told to mom and dad because predators use that a lot too. You shouldn't tell mom and dad, right? So it's kind of a red flag right away. Anyone that's around little kids can benefit from this and just knowing, oh, the next time, oh, I hear a kid say he doesn't want to give me a hug. Ding, ding, ding. High five. Respect that. Don't bribe a child. I'll give you this if you come give me a hug. They don't want to let it go. You know, one of the reasons I kind of started this proactive parenting group is because I know way too many people in my close circle, my acquaintances, my family who have experienced childhood sexual abuse. And they've carried that trauma. They continue to carry that trauma now as adults in different ways, you know, and all of them are going through different ways of healing. And the process is different for every single person. It's going to be a process for the rest of their life. So, and every new thing that comes in life triggers it, whether you have a kid, whether you get married, whether you're in a new relationship, different triggers for different people. They don't have a community of people to talk to and relate to and empathize with what they're continuing to go with. It's not something that just happened 30 years ago and it's over now. They still live with it every single day. A group of girls got together and have started this group for adult survivors of child sexual abuse. And the group right now is South Asian, mm -hmm. right now Indian women, but men are also welcome. It's not an anonymous group. And that's with purpose. Like it's to put a face to what's mm -hmm. going on it's to create a community where you don't need to feel ashamed and where you know you won't be judged right yeah I, I like I think that's important it, we're starting it very small and um, I talked to some of the women in the group and they would really 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 want others to benefit from it too so if anyone is interested in joining or wanting to just learn more about the group they can get in contact with me I am definitely a safe person to get in touch with highly confidential anyway Facebook I can give you email if you don't want me to see you to begin oh. with you can just do it through email whatsapp is always great for me um, I'll leave you all my contact stuff and then the proactive parenting group if you search it you can find it so I'll give you the name of what that is too yeah. I highly recommend people joining that group too it's a lot of me and talking I was hoping more people would discuss you know to get that but I guess that's hard and I get it so, well, yeah. Thank you, I appreciate yeah thanks for having me this was really crazy <laughs> but so great like I even feel like these are things that I can be more aware of for my own self. So I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being open to these kinds of topics and learning together. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye.